Welcome into the um, into episode 77. By the grace of God, we testify of his mercies and his love in the name of Jesus. Welcome. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ as we commence this amazing uh, broadcast. Is, uh, wow, it's amazing and it's incredible. It's on the 27th, 21st day of uh, August and uh, just learning new ways, new methods <laughs> of reading scripture. And we just want to proclaim Psalm 77. It's season 8 of 150 days of Psalms. Hallelujah. When we began the year, I, I, I thought by now we'll be already done. But the Holy Spirit changed. The, he helped me to uh, slow down a little bit and also be able to record this episodes as i learn more so i do welcome you in the most excellent way as the lord enables us in the name of our lord jesus christ we commence with a prayer precious father you are infinite in mercy father there are moments in our lives where we have not We have not acknowledged your very, very presence due to the circumstances and the situations that we have been facing. Even making us feel like you've forgotten us, O oh Lord. But Lord, you have not forgotten us. And for this reason, as we pray, open my eyes. I pray that you'll open my eyes as I begin this broadcast and the Lord you will enable us to see wonderful things out of your law. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 77. In the day of trouble, I seek God. So get your Bibles, let's go into this episode together as the Lord helps us for the director of music, for Jeduthan of Asaph, a psalm. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, O oh God, and I groaned. I mused, and my spirit grew faint. Selah. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. Verse number five. I thought about the former days, the days of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused and my spirit inquired. Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time. Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Selah. If you are new to the terms of the psalmist, we know that they'll see the word Selah in the scripture. It means pause and think about it deeply. Verse 10, then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years of the right hand of the Most High, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. 
Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so holy as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people, among your people, among the peoples. Verse 14 of Psalm 77 says, You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. Psalm 77 and verse 16. The waters saw you, O Lord. The waters saw you and wreathed. The very depths were conversed. The clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the wild wind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led throughout the sea, through the sea, your way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Verse 19 gives us the title of our episode. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. Beloved, the invisible footprints of the Lord will appear in moments when, like as in this Jerusalem of Asaph, that, you know, a person is in deep trouble. They're crying out to God. This is the picture of Psalm 77. This psalm describes a person who is in deep trouble, who cried out to God, but felt that God was not responding. And in those moments that this psalm is felt like this, the scripture tells us, if we find ourselves in similar situation, we should do this as the psalmist did, continue to call on God day and night. While remembering all the ways God has shown us his love in the past because of what God has shown us. He has given us, he did for us in advance, he gave his one and only begotten son. That through Jesus, we now have an assurance that he did not spare his own son, but gave him up, up, up for all of us. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 5. Let me just read that portion. It's one of the favorite portions to read. It says, Second Peter 1 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and his own goodness. In moments when we are feeling as if God has forgotten us. God is not there. You know, you're feeling so, so afraid and you're looking and wondering, when will this situation end? Well, the psalmist was in the similar situation. When he came, he says, Ha, in verse number seven, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show us his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? As the psalmist was wondering about this, as his heart mused and his spirit inquired, we in the New Testament are better placed and in full of knowledge that we have to make our calling sure in our election because his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the one through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness it is through this invisible footprints of the lord 
that he passed through. He passed through in verse 19. He says it, hallelujah. He says that your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. As, as the Lord came before Moses and as Moses was there, you know, calling on the name of the Lord and saying, Lord, my father, how will I get it? How will I go to the other town? How will I go to the sea, to the other place? Look, 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 Pharaoh is coming. Pharaoh is coming. But what did the Lord say? What do you have in your hand? Hallelujah. Beloved, the Lord is leading you like a flock. By the hand of Moses and Aaron, that dark situation, I want to assure you that it is not dark when you have the light. It may be dark, but as soon as the light shows up, even a spark, there will be no more darkness. Our Father is full of compassion, is full of love, and His invisible footprints are carrying you through. They are carrying you through it. You have to realize that he who did not spare his son. Let's look at Romans 8, verse 32, that we may be able to see. Romans is in the New Testament for the young believers who may not know where it is. But we thank God because of the table of contents that is usually in the Bible. Please use it. If at all you have a physical Bible and you don't know where to get books, don't feel like you don't know anything, please use the table of contents. But if you've been using the Bible long enough, you'll just flip once or twice and you'll be able to get it. So it says this, Romans 8.32, He did not spare his own son that gave him up for us. Oh, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? And all these things that he will graciously give us, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him. So child of God, for you to be assured of these invisible footsteps, these invisible footprints of the Lord, there he is there, he does not leave you. You know, there's a story that is given about um, a man who was shown two sets of footprints and he was very excited about those two foot those two sets of footprints and when he had trouble he realized that in that trouble he did not see the other set of footprints so he asked about it and said lord how comes when I was going through the most difficult part of my life, you were not there. You are not seen. How comes you are not there, Lord? How comes? Then the Lord said to him, it's in those moments that I carried you. This day, beloved, I come to encourage somebody that do not allow yourself to be discouraged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, by the mercies of God, we need to realize that we have already even even in that situation where you feel like you 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 know god is not there like his presence is not is missing like the situation is difficult listen to this romans chapter 8 let me start from verse 31 it says what shall we say then to these things if god is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against the Lord's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? 
Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised and who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us? This is a big question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from this love? Who can separate us from this love? No one can separate us. The Lord has already given unto us guidance. He says His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. And indeed, right now, whatever you're going through for life and godliness, the Lord has already given it to you through the knowledge of Him. So if at all you find yourself, you are not having any knowledge of Him, then begin to look for the knowledge of Him. Begin to seek for the knowledge of Him. As you seek for the knowledge of Him, His divine power has given you everything you need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own goodness and by His own grace. This is something beyond, you know, uh, looking at the circumstances. It could be you are facing some situations at the workplace. It could be you are facing some conditions um, that are difficult. But child of God, I come to encourage you in the same way that the Lord says in Psalm 77, 20, that you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. In this day, beloved, we are in the new covenant. In Psalm 89, verse 34, 35, it says, he, I will not violate my, I will not violate what my lips have uttered. I will not, I will not, hallelujah. Get me this verse, dear mind. <laughs> Psalm 89, verse 34, 37, 35. It says, I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. It says, Lord, I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. This is the powerful word that the Lord gives us as an assurance of his nature of constantly living in visible footprints in situations. The path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints were not seen, he is there. His footprints are in that situation. His footprints are in that dark situation. That situation that looks impossible. His footprints, though invisible, are right there. Beloved of God, in the times that we are living, the enemy would like in one way to lead as many people into deception as possible. As many people as possible into deception. In the history, in the last days, this is the kind of thing that the enemy would like to do for every, for the end time to be able to, you know, capture as many Christians who think they can double in sin and still have their portion in the kingdom of God. It is not possible. Let the invisible footprints of the Lord lead you like he led Moses and Aaron. And then people were led by Moses and Aaron because Moses and Aaron were with the Lord. Right now, we are in the new covenant. Hallelujah. We are kings and priests. And the Lord has enabled us by his power to come to this realization. Child of God, do not allow yourself to come into deception. Do not allow yourself to, fi to find yourself in a place of deception deception a mixture of the truth and lies deception this is a big challenge that we are facing in the generations we are today where people are mixing the truth and the lie people are using uh, you know um the stages, you know, they can put up very beautiful stage, very sound, crisp light, everything. But deep within that, as they were coming for the tour, they were drinking alcohol and having obscene talk in the plane, in the chartered plane that is just for them. And you would come there and start to receive from them. You may be familiar with the songs. But beloved of God, if you show yourself up in a place where 
there is very little word being mentioned and a lot of experiences being talked about, then run and flee from deception because their invisible footprints are not going to be there. The Lord is not going to lead you um, into deception. He is the way. He is the truth. And His everlasting life, He did not spare His own Son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Apart from the invisible footprints we see in Psalm 77, 19, let's go on and find out more as we read the book of Proverbs and receive some beautiful, beautiful things there that the Lord is enabling us to receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs, Proverbs 3. Woo! I know there's something that the Lord is depositing in your spirit right now. If you are facing that mighty waters, if you are facing those mighty waters, if you are facing the sea, the Lord promises that His path led through the sea. His path led through the sea. His path led through the sea. His way through the mighty waters. His way through the mighty waters. That is where he passed. Hallelujah. So the path that you are on right now, you need to check where is it leading. For there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. Beloved, we are going to continue to read and then we are going to pray. But one thing that I want to mention is that God is here right now. In that circumstance, in that situation, He is there. In that situation, in that circumstance, as dark as it looks like, as difficult as it looks like, as loud as it is, because the path through the sea, the path leading through the sea, the sea was intimidating. The sea is very intimidating. The sea is extremely intimidating. When you look at the sea, you do not want to think of even going to swim there, live alone walking. But that path led through the sea. That path, Psalm 77 verse 19, that path led through the sea, that way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints were not seen, though as we were looking at the earth trembling and quaking, when as we see the thunder and hearing the wild wind and the lightening up, lighting up the world, ah, as the clouds poured down water and the skies resounded with thunder, with arrows flashing back and forth, thunder was carved in the wild wind, your, your lightning lit up the world. This does not look like a very good uh, uh, description of an answer to prayer. Psalm 77 from verse 16. When you look at it and begin to apply it in your situation, you'll notice that it does not look like a very peaceful, calm uh, answer from God. Because it says, the water saw you, O God, the water saw you, and read the depths were conversed. The depths were conversed. The depths looked and the depths conversed. The depths immediately conversed. The, the depths were convulsing. You know, like if you've seen what convulsing is. The clouds above the depths, they poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. So as we are talking about this, it is something that is so powerful that is happening. 
the weather pattern and the weather condition it is shaking it is you know everything is looking impossible but it says that the clouds poured down water the skies resounded with thunder hallelujah that your arrows flashed back and forth your thunder was stirred in the wild wind your lightning lit up the world the earth trembled and quaked the path led through the sea your way through the mighty waters though your footprints were not seen you led your people like a flock by the hand of moses and aaron beloved what a powerful what a powerful powerful revelation in that situation that you're in right now before even we read proverbs chapter 3 i want us to take time to pray over this difficult looking kind of circumstances it could be a situation that looks impossible it could be that when you look at it it looks like it's done people have even sat down commissions have sat down they have already agreed they have already said no it's done this person is finished but god is changing the tide go through the sea Go through the sea in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. As we go through the sea and the path is the mighty waters. Father, we thank you for your word that as you go through the sea, as the path leads through the sea, and the way through the mighty waters. In this invisible footstep moment, Lord my Father, I choose, according to your word in Psalm 77, to recount and remember the deeds of the Lord. I remember the deeds of the Lord. I remember your miracles, O Lord. I meditate on all your works and consider all your deeds. Would you go before the Lord in that scripture, Psalm 77, 10, all the way to 12. Pray it and mention it. Yes, I appeal the years of the right hand. I pray in this situation, in this condition, that Father my God, every circumstance that is looking like Lord, a difficult situation, Father, we, assured, we are assured of your presence. That in the same way you led the children of Israel through the sea and the way was in the mighty waters. Though your footsteps were not seen, my God, my Father, we align ourselves with your agenda. And we pray according to your word, O oh my Father, that though, hallelujah, the years of the right hand, the years of the right hand, O oh my Father, we proclaim those years of the right hand. Father, we remember your deeds, O oh Lord. We remember your miracles, O oh Lord. We meditate on all your works. We consider all your mighty deeds. O oh, Father, in the nations of the earth, we turn around, we turn away from every form, every form of deception being programmed into the heavenlies, being programmed into media, being programmed into every activities. Your ways, O oh God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Father, we thank you that in this time, we are comforted with this knowledge that you led the people through the sea the way was the mighty waters lord according to your word in psalm 77 19 though your footprints were not seen thank you my father in jesus name thank you lord amen hallelujah we come to proverbs we come to Proverbs, uh, we come to Proverbs chapter 3, one of my 
favorite Proverbs chapter 3 that we are coming on to now. Proverbs chapter 3. And as we mentioned this about the invisible footsteps of the Lord, uh, we are assured that as we go through those difficult moments, put your trust in the Lord. Put your confidence in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's come on to uh, Proverbs 3. It says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Listen to that. My son, don't forget my teaching, he says. But keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. So Proverbs 3, these are further benefits of wisdom. As we continue to get to see the invisible qualities of our God and particularly his omnipresence being there everywhere. His omnipotence, being all-powerful and is omniscient, all-knowing. There is nothing God does not know. Mankind many times thinks that there are some things God cannot see. Mankind sometimes is fooled to think that even though he may sin in secret, that God will not know what he did in secret. But Psalmist again says in Psalm 139, that even though I go to the darkest part of the earth, even there is like day for you. Even I go to the earth, where I go, God, you find me. So if you not forget the teachings of the Lord and keep his commands in your heart, they will prolong your life, dear Malcolm. They will provide for you a longevity. They will provide for you prosperity, Pauline. Let love and faithfulness, verse 3, Proverbs 3, it says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them in the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Let's go back to your situation. How difficult it looks. How it looks like God has forgotten. How it looks like God is not listening to you. How would you be able to see that the way out of that situation, He has already given it to you. He has already given you a way out of that difficulty, out of that situation. Most of the time, which is something that we brought to ourselves. Something that through our knowledge, through our limited knowledge of him, we don't get everything we need. You see, in first, in second Peter chapter one, verse three, it talks about his divine nature. First Peter, second Peter chapter one, verse three, if you are writing down, it says his divine nature has given us everything we need for life and for godliness through our knowledge. Of him who called us by his own divine glory, goodness and by his own glory and goodness. So now we begin to, instead of look at the situation, oh my God, there is the sea ahead of us. And as you get into the sea, you are beginning to walk in the troubled waters. As you're going through the troubled waters, do not turn to the waters. Do not turn to the trouble. Turn to the knowledge of God. Because everything you need, he has already given for life and for godliness. He has already given everything you need for life and godliness. Dear Malcolm, hear the word of the Lord. He has already given you everything you need for life and godliness. Everything you need for family. Everything you need for, for your finances. Everything you need for your ministry. Everything you need for your education. Everything you need is in the Lord. And His own goodness and glory has called you. So now when we are coming to Proverbs 3, it says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. These are qualities of the Holy Spirit. So let you be filled with the Holy Spirit so that the invisible qualities of God are evident in your life. Oh, hallelujah. 
Let the love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, 4, uh, 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Now again, in that dark situation, that situation that looks like, Pastor, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been trying everything I can do, but we have not been able. Lord, I've been trying to do this, I've been trying to do this well. Wait, this is the word of God. It says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. In that circumstance, trust in the Lord. When lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him and you will make your paths straight. Lean not on your own understanding. In as much as you may know what needs to be done, lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Choose not to lean on your own understanding in the name of Jesus. Verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Verse 9 of Proverbs 3. With the first fruits of all your crops, then your burns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will be, your vats will brim over with new wine. Would you pause right here and make a prayer? Say, Lord. I choose to honor you with my wealth. The wealth that comes from you, O oh God. For you are the one who gives me power to create wealth. So Father, I give back my wealth to you. I bring it all back to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As I give you the first fruits of all that is within me. Everything about my faithfulness, I give it to you. Everything about my gentleness, I give it to you. Everything about joy, about my peace, my first fruits of joy, my first fruits of love, my first fruits of long suffering, my first fruits of self-control, I fully honor you with them. I honor you, Lord, even with my, uh, with my walk with you. I honor you with whatever is wealth in my life, both spiritual and physical. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now I receive my burns to the overflow and my vats overflow with new wine in jesus name amen now let me break this down for you in proverbs 3 it's not just talking about money it's not just talking about physical things it's also talking about spiritual things and especially it says that honor the lord with your wealth if you look the wealth that god is said the wealth of the nations when you see somewhere it's written wealth in the scriptures it has something beyond just, you know, it has something beyond just the material things. If we look at wealth, wealth is not riches. There are two different things. Wealth is very important for us to understand its definition. It is meaning that there is an abundance of valuable material possessions or resources. Similarly, it may mean there is an abundance of valuable spiritual possessions or resources. So all property that has a money value or an exchangeable value is considered to be wealth. 
all material objects that have economic utility are considered to be wealth. That you see that you understand that wealth is not just in dollars and euros. There is a spiritual wealth. I've come across uh, people who materially, when you look at them, they look like they're not doing too well. I've just had a little discussion with them, brought understanding to them about our Lord Jesus Christ. And I discovered before they knew Jesus, they were spiritually wealthy. So when they get to that connection of understanding, aha, beloved of God, you begin to see a different dimension of seeking God where you do not consider seeking God as for monetary gain or financial gain. Like some people have missed it before when we read in the book of uh, Second Timothy. You see, the wealth of the nations will be given to them. In the book of Isaiah chapter 61. Chapter 60 verse 11. It says your gates will always be open. They will never be shut day or night. So that nations, men of the nations will bring the, you know, will bring the nations. So the wealth of the nations will be given to you. Now, this one is, I don't want to digress. Let me just continue. Verse, 10, verse 11 says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. And do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom. The man who gains understanding. For she is more profitable than silver. And yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her right, in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life for those who embrace her. Those who lay hold of her will be blessed. Proverbs 3 and verse 19. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, their deeps were divided, and the clouds let drop the dew. My son, preserve good judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble when you lie down you will not be afraid when you lie down your sleep will be sweet have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked for the lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared beloved this portion from verse 21 to verse 26 is a powerful portion for you to memorize verse 27 do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act do not say to your neighbor come back later i'll give it tomorrow when you have it with you do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you do not accuse a man for no reason, when he has done no harm, when he has done you no harm. Verse 31. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways. For the Lord detests a perverse man, but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked. But he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers and gives grace to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up to shame. 
The category of people called fools in the scripture are not people that don't have education. The people that we descri are described here as fools are the people that have despised God and they don't want anything to do with God. The Bible says in Proverbs 14.1, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. So the wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up to shame. We go now to the book of Revelation chapter 12, as in accordance to the pattern of recording this beautiful, wonderful episode. We are now on Revelation 12, and by the grace of God, it's just a wonderful thing to see what God is able to do. So it says, a great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. That is the word of God. Revelation 12, a great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by her God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. There was war in heaven, verse number 7. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled on to the earth and his angels her with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you, is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had been given, who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle 
so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and half a time. Out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged, was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and hold on to the testimony of Jesus. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea. That is verse number 13. Chapter 13 verse 1. That's how it ends. Beloved, the invisible footsteps of the Lord are available to you even right now. In the circumstances you are, you have a testimony to give. There is a testimony for you to give. There is something that you can begin to proclaim concerning the greatness of this God we serve. That as we come to this full knowledge of the goodness of God and his mercies and his love, that we will not be, we will not fail. We will not fail to know him. And every moment we walk, we are walking in the truth of the gospel. Beloved of God, people want to see the quick results, but they don't want to see the work. The Lord is always doing his work in us. And if you're already in a situation, God is already at work in that situation. You better begin to rise up and see the situation God is calling you to. The situation that God is, you know, drawing you closer to. The God of glory is calling you into. That situation requires you to humble yourself and know that I trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your footsteps. He will direct them. He said it. He said it. He will make it happen. He will direct your footsteps. That's exactly what the Lord promised us. And I come to mention to you, beloved of God, in the moments when you are seeking God and wondering, is God really there? Is God really in my situation? I'm here to encourage you. His invisible footsteps. He walked with the children of Israel. He walked with them in the paths, in the paths of the sea and in the mighty waters were the way. So that way that is mighty waters, you need to begin to check, how am I living with God? What is my relationship with him? Do I have unforgiveness in my heart? Do I give up so easily? Proverbs 3 says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them on your neck. So this neck, it talks about, when you see anywhere in the scripture where it talks about neck, it talks about, you know, the neck is a very crucial aspect of the human body. The neck determines the connection between the neck and the the head the neck when you see it being mentioned you know you notice that also when when rebecca uh rebecca wanted their son to be to be to be blessed instead of her of the other son she covered the hands of the son and also his neck there is something very significant about the neck and when we begin to see this, that the neck is also the one that holds the yoke of the animal. The yoke is broken from your neck. It means that the neck is a very essential aspect of your life. He says again, do not speak to the Lord with an outstretched neck. Do not speak with an outstretched neck. It says that, you know, pride, pride is described around the neck. In fact, 
He talks about that they wear pride like a necklace. There is something about the neck. <laughs> hey! Revelations that we are receiving from the Lord. When we read in Genesis chapter 41, verse 42, Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Beloved, the chain was put around the neck. The neck denotes a lot of authority. So when we see this scripture talking to us about let love and faithfulness never leave you, bind them around your neck. It says that put your entire person completely under the leadership of love and faithfulness. Let them never leave you. In that dark moment, like the psalmist was in the dark moment, he says, even at night, my eyes don't close. He was so troubled that he could not speak. The invisible, the invisible footprints of the Lord, enabling you to align yourself towards this, posi this position where you are in the place of the word. It says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. So if you're in a place where you have, uh, you have people that you have, um, you know, you have not agreed with, you have people that majorly you have not agreed with, maybe they have angered you or they have done something negative about you, then you need to come to the place of forgiveness. Forgive those people. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Let it never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. You notice the significance of the, the, the neck with Genesis 41, 42. Um, also the blessing, when your blessing was coming upon the tribes of Israel, Judah the blessing of Judah in Jude, Genesis 49.8 it says Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be the, on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. This is the blessing that is coming to Judah. Then it says you are a lion's cub, O Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion who crouches and lies down. Like a lioness who dares to rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah. Nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. Until he comes to whom he belongs. And the obedience of the nations is his. He will tether a vine, a donkey to a vine. He's called to the choicest branch. He will wash the garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. This blessing was given by Jacob to his sons. And to Judah, this is what the Lord said, that his hands shall be on the neck of his enemies. This is a powerful revelation, beloved as what the Lord is allowing us to see in these scriptures. That Judah will praise, your brothers will praise you, your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. I pray today in the name of Jesus, may the Lord give you capacity to break the neck of your enemies. Every enemy that is, you know, I'm not talking about humans. I'm talking about the spiritual aspect May you experience the favor of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Powerful revelations. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for redeeming us through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for redeeming us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are redeemed. Lord, my, my neck, let it be adorned with love. Love and faithfulness. 
love and faithfulness. Father, we pray that anything that is not of you that has come upon our neck, Father, any way we have spoken with an outstretched neck, we ask for forgiveness. We ask that, Lord, your invisible qualities, we are totally assured and totally trusting in you. The Lord, even though we cannot see you, we know you are at work and we know that you are aligning everything in our purposes. Lord, we remember the days of old and the things that you have done for us and in us. Lord, my Father, we thank you for the provision of grace and the gift of righteousness that you have showed un unto us, Lord. We give you the praises and the honor. We give you the adoration that is due to your name. Father, we bless you. We bless you. Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, the Lord, who we'll continue to see your faithfulness. Father, we submit our spirit, soul, and body into your hands. Oh, Father. Even when Psalm 69 1 says, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. Lord, we are assured of your power. We are assured of your invisible qualities, even in those moments. Even in those moments, we are assured of your invisible qualities. Lord, and we will not lift our horns against heaven or speak with an outstretched neck. Father, your invisible qualities are all over us. Help us, O oh God, intervene in our situation. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is upon us and with us. Lord, let these words be a gallant to grace our head and a chain to adorn our neck. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, as we are sharing these things, I mentioned that it's important for you to give your life to Jesus. Probably you are going through a situation and in that situation, you feel the need. You feel the need to acknowledge Christ into your life. Because you feel like you cannot do it without Jesus. Align your heart to him. The word of God says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead then you will be saved. I pray for salvation to come upon you. As you acknowledge Jesus as Lord, I want you to pray with me wherever you are. Mention it. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am born again. The old is gone, the new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. 
in Jesus name amen you are now a child of God and I want to pray with you as I trust God with you in the name of Jesus father I thank you for this dear beloved that has acknowledged you as Lord and also I pray that we will acknowledge you even when we do not see you even when we don't have anything to to say this is how God has answered we know you are still answering we know that God your presence is strong upon us and mightly with us father let your holy spirit lead us shine upon us in the name of Jesus thank you lord thank you lord shalom